Hey everyone, in today's tutorial, I want to show you how to magnetize your Cadian infantry models. So let's start out with why you might want to magnetize your models. First, it's a great way to make sure that you can always have the war gear options that you may want in the future. Once you glue them on, it's a little harder to swap them in and out. By magnetizing your models, you'll be able to make sure that your army is ready for any changes that might come along to include changes in your own personal narrative, changes in points, changes in the codexes, and changes in your local meta. So those are all great reasons to magnetize your models and to keep your models ready for any situation. For a tutorial, we'll be using the Cadian Commander here from the Cadia Stands or the Combat Patrol box set or the Cadian Command Squad box set, depending on when you're watching this video and when the models have been released. So this model here has a number of options that are available to include his chain sword, his uh, power sword, his power fist, plasma pistol, last pistol, and bolt pistol. So lots of options for this character. So what you will need for today's tutorial is of course some magnets. So what I have to show you all today is the one and a half by one millimeter magnets from the Magnet Baron and the three by two millimeter magnets from the Magnet Baron. This is the smallest and largest size magnets that I would recommend for magnetizing your infantry models that are part of the Astra Militarum. You could go with larger magnets for Space Marines, but I think the 3x2 millimeter would work for all your infantry models there too as well. What you want to do is make sure you get a magnet that is powerful enough that can hold the weight of the part that you're, mag that you're magnetizing to the model. one and a half by one millimeter works for things such as small things that are attached at the wrist. So say if you cut a plasma pistol off at the wrist and then magnetize it at that point, the one and a half by one millimeter magnet will work very well there. However, it doesn't hold a lot of weight, so you have to be careful. I've magnetized several models this way and your bits can fall off quite easily, so you just gotta keep track of them. Now, with the three by two millimeter, with this, this is the largest I would go with. I think the actual ideal size is two by two millimeter. However, I do not have any of those. So Magnet Baron, if you're watching, I would gladly be a sponsor if you wanna send me some two by two millimeter magnets. <laughs> But these three by two millimeter magnets will fit and will work. The great part about this size is that it has enough force to hold the magnets uh, in place once you have clicked them together. So this includes like if you have a weapon in a specific pose. So if we want our chain sword up in the air or maybe pointed down low to the ground, this magnet will have enough force to be able to keep the item in place wherever you've placed it onto the model uh, and be able to change it up as you go along so these are what I recommend. Next thing we'll need is a good drill bit and a pin vise for that. So I have here uh, this pin vise and I already have my drill bit that I need in place but I'll show you how to size that up to make sure you're using the right drill bit for your magnets which is very important. I also have my drill bit set from the Army Painter. I do recommend these. This is a great little kit. Folds down here makes it real easy to retrieve your drill bits in and out. Right? You go like this. They fold down on the bottom. It's a great little piece of packaging. So they have made it easy for us hobbyists to get the drill bits that we need in another packaging very easily. The other thing we will need is the correct glue. So we will need super glue here. So here is some crazy glue and this is the precision tip applicator. It's my favorite version to work with. You cannot use plastic cement or plastic glue because we are doing metal to plastic. So we do need some super glue here. So this is the one that I highly recommend. I can get this at a lot of places, including Target. There are a few optional tools that I do highly recommend. First is these colored uh, polarized magnet applicators from the Magnet Baron. So they are opposite of each other, so they will attract. But the point is, is so that you make sure you are applying your magnets in the correct polarity every time. So what I like to do is blue is for the hull or for the torso of the model that I'm magnetizing and the red is the weapon or the limb that is holding the weapon. And this way, all of my magnetization is universal. So if I wanna take the arms from this commander and apply them to another model later on, say a sergeant, I will be able to do that as long as I always make sure that I have the same polarity. By using this tool, I'm always able to do that. Or 
you can do the old school way. You can get out your other model, you can slap a magnet against it and see the way it magnetizes. So these do have a uh, super glue resistant coating on them, um, but I would recommend still not globbing super glue all over these uh, when doing your work. The other thing that I would recommend having that is optional is some type of plastic applicator that you can push the magnet in smooth. Here I have an old basing tool uh, from Games Workshop uh, that has seen the end of its useful life and I now use this to push in things such as uh, super glue when needed. So I recommend this too and I'll show you why as we work through placing the magnets onto the model. The next thing we want to do is make sure that we're using a drill bit that is the correct size for the magnets that we're going to be using. Since I am using these 3 by 2 millimeter magnets, I'm going to try to use my 1 8 of an inch drill bit. Now, what you want to do, since most drill bits are made of a type of ferrous metal, so it means magnets will um, adhere to them, stick them on the back and then check the diameter comparison. What you want is you want to make sure that your, your drill bit is either equal to or slightly greater than your magnets. You do not want it to be smaller than. You run risk of damaging your model when trying to force your magnets in if your drill bit is too small. But you don't want it too big either, say more than half a millimeter or quarter of a millimeter in size bigger than your magnets, otherwise it might be hard to get the magnet to stay in place when gluing it in. So as you can see here, my 1 8 of an inch drill bit is almost perfect for these three millimeter diameter magnets. So what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna look at a few different things. Now for the three by two millimeter or one eighth of an inch diameter magnet, um, when we apply this, you can already look here. See that? This is going to be nearly the same diameter as the space on this arm to apply the magnet. So when drilling a hole this size, which is why I recommend the two millimeter magnets over the three millimeter for infantry models, we got to be very careful to make sure this is perfectly centered. The other thing that we're going to want to do is when we go to apply our holes to our commander, which we'll do after we apply them to the arms, is we'll want to make sure that these two things line up. So I'm going to stick my drill bit here, the pre-made hole by GW. If I go for the top of it, it's just about the right position. So I'm going to start there. And I'm going to start drilling. Now what I recommend doing is going in a little bit stop and then check uh oh look at that because i'm trying to do this through a camera i have actually drilled lower than i intended to i wanted this to be to the upper part of the arm instead of drilled to the bottom this can be corrected what i'm going to do is angle my drill bit like this and then carefully drill upwards because i haven't drilled my whole hole yet right i haven't drilled the entirety of it i've just gotten it started i've gotten like a like a pilot hole, right? And I can so this is a great way of showing how you can fix your mistakes, right? Okay, so I've now drilled upward, and now you can see the hole is much closer to the top of the arm. That's where I want it for my model and how I want to do it here. So now that I got this up here, I want to start drilling in. All right. So we'll need to make sure that the hole drilled is at least two millimeters in depth because that is the type of magnet I'm using. You can drill a little deeper and it doesn't hurt, but what you wanna make sure is you don't drill too far and start to damage the outside here or jeopardize the integrity. Now notice this three millimeter diameter really only gives a half a millimeter worth of space of plastic around it, but that's enough. And it didn't warp or um, otherwise deform the arm itself. If you do make a mistake and you come out past the edge, you can actually fix that with a little bit of green stuff. A little bit of that epoxy putty and smush it on there um, and then smooth it out with uh, a wet brush or a wet um, tool, right? And then smooth it out if need be. So let's go ahead and apply or check this in comparison to our model. Okay. So look here, when this goes on, it usually has it so that the top of the fabric is just below the straps of the chest plate, right? See that there? That's about where we want. So what we want to do is then take this back and compare. In order for me to get 
the top of the fabric just below the the crest of the body armor there right because otherwise it's going to look funny and it's almost so that the shoulder pad lines up up there i need to make sure that my hole is drilled centered up now i'm going to show you all a technique you can use to make that happen okay so what i've done is i've got a little bit of paint on a brush i'm going to take the arm i'm going to apply a little bit of paint to it okay not much very thin and then I'm going to set this up against this where I want it once I get in frame. So I'm going to shove that up against there, take it off, and then I can look at the general impression of where the outline of that arm was and where the hole is that I want to drill. And then while the paint is still wet, I can wipe it away so we don't ruin any of the detail or get paint on there we didn't intend to get on there. Luckily, there's no primer yet, so this stuff will rub right off. You don't even got to worry about it too much, especially being in there in the folds. But here, now I can see where I want to drill. So now, I'm going to drill my hole. Once again, start gently. Right? Start gently. Do a pilot hole. Okay. So if we look at this pilot hole, it looks like I'm getting it right there centered where I want it to go. So I'm going to keep drawing. I need to maybe come towards the front a little bit more, maybe. So now I'm getting to a tricky part here. So here's what's about to happen. The plastic for this model is very thin. There's actually, it's a hollow torso, right? So I'm eventually going to break through. Now when I do this, the drill bit's going to want to go through. I'm going to want to clean that out nice and neat. And then, we're going to do that now. But keep your finger compressed on the front and back of the chest if you're doing it the way I am. Because otherwise, the pressure of this drill bit going through right at that seam could actually push, could actually push your glued model apart. So you want to be very careful there, okay? Look, I've now gotten in. Now you're going, wait, Keating Sergeant Steel. There's a hollow space inside. How are we supposed to glue a magnet? Don't worry, it still works, I promise you. As long as you get the space inside. Okay. So now I'm gonna repeat the same step over here on this side. Okay, as you can see here, now I got my holes on both sides. Um, just as a note, I do glue together my models with plastic glue. This creates a stronger bond. And the other benefit to here is when drilling through here, when this drill bit will apply force when penetrating through the, from the solid to the hollow space towards the front and back, right? It'll break through at the middle there first. And then the drill bit will actually want to push rather than digging through the plastic, which will actually try to separate the two halves of the torso. So plastic cement will hold that together much better. Um, so that's my preferred cement type. So if you are seeing your torso come apart, it could be one of two reasons. One, you're using super glue and you just didn't have a strong enough bond or uh, your plastic glue wasn't set yet. So either way, just make sure that you can just Right, re-glue, push back together, just try not to get any glue in the holes yet until we are applying our magnets into there. Okay, for our next step, we'll finally be applying the magnets to the model. So I have my applicator here. I'm gonna place my magnet onto the end. Uh, so this way I make sure that I'm putting it in at the correct polarity that I want it to be in the model. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, open up my super glue. I'm going to apply a little bit of super glue just around the edge of this opening here. Okay, so I've actually poured it down inside just a little bit. Then I'm going to push this in. This is what makes these applicators great. Push it nice and flat on that flat surface. There we go. Now, if you don't have one of these applicators, you can use a plastic tool like this and make sure you push it flat. I would still recommend doing that, getting in here and pushing it flat like this because Sometimes these applicators might get caught on a little bit of detailing on the model or something and then it won't go flush. We want to make sure that's as flush as possible because we do not want the magnet to be visible after we put the things on the model. We want to try to get that magnet hidden in there. Um, 
So I'm gonna apply a little bit more pressure here. Okay, so I get that pushed in a little bit. So if we look at it right, it looks like it's pretty flush and hidden in there. Okay, then we repeat the same thing on the other side, same polarity. I like to do the same polarity because um, like I said, that makes it easier for me to match up everything later on. Um, so I'm gonna grab another one of my magnets. Now, if you don't have one of these cool polarity tools like I've gotten from the Magnet Baron, one of the things you could do is I like to stack my magnets up on, say, a metal tool. So like here, I got my uh, old school now, um, uh, you know, scraper tool from Games Workshop. And you could just simply put them on here like this. And then you always got to make sure you take them off in the same direction. So it's right. That gets a little more tricky. Because uh, what happens if you accidentally roll the magnet over in your hand after you've taken it off your stack? Is it the same polarity? These give me a lot of peace of mind, so I really do recommend these. Okay, so let's do it again. Apply a little glue. Oops, see here, that's a great mistake, right? My magnet came off my applicator. Um, so who knows, the magnet could have gotten flipped around and then we could get ourselves into trouble by putting the magnet in in the incorrect direction that we want it. Okay, so next what we want to do is place magnets into the weapon arms. So since I have these nice polarity tools, I'm just going to grab a magnet, stick it on the end. Red always goes into my weapons. Blue goes into the things that the weapons attached to. We'll put just a little bit of super glue down inside one of these slots, not much. You don't want to do too much because you don't want it to overflow, right? You don't want super glue coming back out. Um, there we go. Oops. There we go. I'm just going to make sure I push that flat. There we have it. I got my three by two millimeter magnet into my arm. So then I'm just going to repeat this step over and over again. for all of my other weapons attachments. So now here we get the chain sword, right? Make sure to push, get that nice and firm into there without breaking your model too. Oops, I had a little excess super glue here. I'll clean that up later as I'm finalizing this model. Maybe I'll cover it up with some paint chipping or something. Take your mistakes and turn them into cool narrative opportunities. Can't recommend that enough. Okay, got super glue in my last pistol arm. Put this on my polarity tool. Push it in. Now, look how my magnet is showing because I drilled a little too far onto the edge of my arm. So I will hide that with some epoxy here in just a moment. Now I've just realized for this tutorial, I'm actually out of regular green stuff epoxy. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of liquid green stuff, which works just as well. So I've got a nice applicator tool here that I can sculpt it with. I'm just gonna apply a little bit to the model here. Really just fill in that tiny little gap. The good part is that liquid green stuff works very well, especially on these small little gaps like this. You could even, because these magnets we're using are so strong, you could even apply a small thin layer over the magnet and it won't really harm anything at all. Just make sure your application of it is smooth. There we go. Okay. Oh, I do a lot of that out of frame, don't I? So anyways, make sure to apply your liquid green stuff smoothly and so that it looks like fabric. Give it time to dry and set up and then we'll apply it. <gasps> also a good lesson learned when working with magnets, try to keep the magnets away from each other. They will attract to each other and then they can mess up the green stuff that you've already worked on. <laughs> hey everyone, now's a good time to take a small break to tell you that I do have a merchandise store in case you'd like to support me. You can click on the link here on my YouTube page in the top right corner in order to go to my Stream Element store. Once you're here at my store, you can browse all the products that I currently offer. If there's something you'd like to see me offer, please let me know. What I really recommend this time around is the organic cotton hobby apron. 
This way, in case you're putting your magnets on your models and you're using super glue, you don't accidentally get that super glue on your nice clothes. As well, it has a funny phrase on it. Well, feck, I spilled my shade again. It also has nice handy pockets on the front, straps a tie around the back, comes in two different colors that you can utilize for yourself. The buttons are adjustable on it for the next strap as well. So please check that out along with any other merchandise available in my store. Thank you for supporting me. Now that all of my super glue and green stuff has dried, we now have a finished Cadian Commander that is fully magnetized. Oops, there we go. So we can swap out the bits. We can change out right to Power Fist, to Chain Sword, Plasma Pistol, all of the different weapon options that we may want. We can see here, Throw on the power sword. And by also, you, you can see by the careful placement of the magnets, the meeting of the armor and the fabric is very neat and clean. So you can see here, everything lines up very well. And look, fully posable. That is what we were going for. I hope that brief video helped you all out with understanding like magnetizing inventory how simple it can be, how easy it is to make it work, and a few of the tips and tricks to look out for. I think the only other thing that I want to say, just as a final note before you maybe finish up or get started, is that do make sure you drill holes deep enough to fit your magnet, but not too shallow either. If they're too shallow, then you'll have awkward moments here. I'll show you what happened. The plasma pistol on. You can see the plasma pistol sticks out a little bit from the body right there. So I will need to do some more epoxy work in order to try to hide that, uh, bulk the fabric out a little bit and then hide it there. Um, and so that's what you want to avoid, but you can cover that up with some green stuff work um, in order to make that go away if it does happen, but you want to try to avoid it as much as you can. And also make sure that you are using magnets that are strong enough <laughs> to hold your gear on and knock your model around um, too. So these 3 by 2 millimeters are the largest size I would recommend for infantry. The 2 by 2 are nearly perfect. So if you're looking for a place to go buy those, I do recommend the Magnet Baron. I am not sponsored by them, but it is a great product. And go there to look at it. All right. Let me know if you all have any more questions about magnetizing infantry models. Uh, and if so, I'll be happy to clarify in the comments down below. And if you're looking for other tutorials, don't forget, I have painting tutorials uh, for Cadian infantry, for Cadian vehicles, and Kazarkin camo pattern and plasma glow as well. So if you do like the effects that I do on my models, go check out those painting tutorials to see how I make those things happen. If there are other things you'd like to see, also let me know if you want to know how I do lenses or maybe how I do my basing please just put it down in the comments I'll be happy to look at doing future tutorials especially now that I have brand new models that I need to build and paint all right folks as always Katie stands <laughs>